love me, yeah, they love me. First love yourself. And God we trust, trust me. I don't trust myself. Your jewelry, I get it took. No show. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog Fantasy. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Make sure to support the show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. They'll also match your first deposit up to $100, and you get a special pick when you sign up. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Murder, what up, man? How you doing? Killer, what's good, man? You're good, man. How was your weekend, big? Man, I had a busy weekend. I started doing parties, you know? I did a party this weekend. Where at? Um, some little kid had a, a bat mitzvah. Oh, bat mitzvah. My bat mitzvah. Bat mitzvah. Bat mitzvah. Bat mitzvah. It's a bat mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> it's felt like it? that, though. It's felt like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah how was it? <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> yeah, they they pay. <laughs> yeah. I know you picked up a good. No, check. this was for free. This was for the fans. Yeah, I don't believe that. I, 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 really, I really don't believe that. <laughs> that's on everything. Yeah, that, that's what you get. That's, that's what happened. That's, that, 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 she ain't believe it. <laughs> she had sunk she, on that. She had say, yeah, say, right. yeah. Well, that's what's up, man. I hope you had a good weekend, bro. Yeah, man. How did y'all feel about the weekend? Like the, um... They changed. They changed the term for pause. I was wondering how you felt about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was, you know what? Because I knew that last week, and I was like, I was like, I was like, I'm not gonna be first. <laughs> I, said, I seen that last week, and I was like, yo, damn. I said, this is uh, this is really a Bethel call. I said, because <laughs> I ain't want you to think I was coming at you, Paul, no type of way. <laughs> if I said it first, like, I ain't want you to think I was trying to offend you. Like, yo, yo, killer, you being funny? Like, I ain't trying to be funny, but that's what's going on out there. How you feel about it? <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, you know... <laughs> How do I feel about it? No diddy, for real. <laughs> <laughs> you right? See, I, it's, a, it's a conflict of interest. That's why I, yeah. I didn't say that last week because I was like, this is kind of a conflict Does of interest. Does it ring off pause the same way, though? For me? Does it sound the same? Well, you know, it got the same syllables of what we usually say before we started saying pause. So the syllable going, I mean, look, I'm not, it's, 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 it's smooth pause. Like, I was saying, oh, we all like ND. I ain't want to go that far. You just go ND on it. What do you man. think, Stat? Um, I won't be using it, but I did see it. It's very interesting. You don't yeah. say pause anyway, though. Yeah, that's why I said I won't be using it, but I Didn't... definitely see people using it now. Yeah, I, I seen it. I seen a yeah, few people. Yeah, that was crazy. The guy who originally first said it, the way he paused, used it was crazy. Yeah, I, I, like I said, this, this was going for about a week and a half because, you know, and for a couple years, there'll be like no freaky or whatever yeah. we say or whatever, but... When I heard about last year, I said, damn, I want to hit murder pause with this, but I don't want them to think it's personal because <laughs> it ain't. Because <laughs> it ain't. Hey, if you're cool, let's move forward. Yeah. Use it accordingly. <laughs> yeah. And let us know what you guys think in the comments. Okay, so Adam Silver says the All-Star game may go away. He said, when I saw the popularity of Steph versus Sabrina, see what's happening in the women's game, we should just be looking to do different things and just make it a celebration of basketball. He said, we're going to look at U.S. versus international. I just think maybe we're past that point where we're going to play a truly competitive game. What do you guys think about what Adam Silver had to say? Yo. Sound like a threat to me. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, if y'all niggas don't get this right, then it's over with. How about that? How about... We'll figure it out because international players are happy to be here. It seems like y'all are taking this for granted. The women are, uh, are much more excited about uh, basketball now than ever, to me, my personal opinion. Not not women basketball players, women in general, um, especially that the ladies are doing so well in college. Even the WNBA is evolving. 
much credit to my man Larry, who's here, who's been telling me about this for about three, four years. And I was like, you just saying that because the Aces is winning. You know what I'm saying? Like, because he lives in Vegas and the Aces is winning. And uh, 100% wrong on my part is definitely evolving. But as far as Adam Silver, to me, it just seems like a threat. If y'all don't get this together in the next year, then I'm going to move on to do something else where we're not celebrating uh, you guys being all-stars. Guys are taking time off during the... He already did it when it came to um, accolades. When mm -hmm. it comes to you can't win MVP, you can't make first team or NBA, you can't yeah. win defensive player if you don't do this. So what I will say is this. I wouldn't take his threats lightly. I mm -hmm. wouldn't say he 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 blowing bubbles. I'm just saying that nigga, if he tells you, don't say I didn't tell you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Same thing, uh how he had the meeting with John Morant, like, and pistol, I told you. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, come on, come on. Nigga. Yeah, yeah, like yo, yeah, don't yeah. say I didn't tell you. So I think when Adam Silver uh, I think he's definitely a player's commissioner as opposed to David Stern. But I think when he says something, he means what he says. Yeah. But he gives you a warning about yeah, it. Yeah, he's giving you the benefit. Right. To say, you you fix it before I fix it. Right. Yeah. yeah. You're not, pause. You're not right. going to like the way I'm going to fix it. Right. And I, I think I like the idea of going in a new direction. I think when they, when they saw Sabrina play... Um, shoot as well as Steph, then they they might entertain that as well. I think each year they should do something different if it's just commemorating and celebrating basketball, just like you have women's competing against guys. That would be interesting just to see. There's girls that would get up for that game. I know they would. Um, just like, can you imagine a, a female rookies versus the, um, the, um, the the NBA rookies that would that would be a really good game. Right but you now, don't, but you don't want Caitlin Clark to go play practice with Dallas. Make up your mind, bro. Which one I'm is saying it? We're <laughs> taking baby steps. Okay, that, practice baby steps. practice in Dallas against a uh, all star. Steps. Like that, you. I think you went to Tyler before. No, I mean to put on a team. It was at first. Let Let's see how they perform. Pause in a game and if they perform then then we could we could revisit that I, and I like this idea because it's like when you go into the all-star game you're definitely going to see people play and if niggas is really not playing they looking at it like spring break yeah. in the NBA they looking at it like a, a mid-season um, vacation then it's supposed to be where you're supposed to showcase your talent and show I'm that far much better than everybody else and move into a place where you know moving towards the playoffs, I'm going to be that guy even though the season started this way. The All-Star game used to tell you who's going to um, turn the season around and it's not doing that anymore. Yeah, what I would really like to see in uh, one of my favorite shows on television is PTI. I'm a big Michael Wilborn fan. What he's been pumping for years and years yeah. and years is what I would really like to see is the Americans versus the international players because yeah. I know the international players would get up for that. I know that they'd be like, yeah, let's show these niggas. And then if you think about it, if we're looking at an international team, uh, this just this year, you got Luca. Yeah, they you got would the clearly Joker, beat them. You got Gil, um, 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 Shea. Yeah. Gil. You got Giannis. Uh, look, this... This would be crazy if this, if that game happened this season and just this All Star break that just passed. That would really, to me, be up in the air because just the four people that I named alone, and I'm not even thinking about. I don't know if he claims it, but you got to think about Sabonis, the elevation of his play. It's a lot yeah. of international players. Who would Joel LMB play with? Paul? Yeah, well, that's a great question too. You know, he signed up with America for the Olympics this year, but. He got his pick, pick and choice too. I think yeah. if you put a Joe Lombard on that team I just named, I think America loses. Okay, moving along to the Chiefs, they sent star cornerback Legarius Sneed to the Titans for a single 2025 third round draft pick, also swapping seventh rounders to send him to the Tennessee Titans. Is this a move from the Chiefs that makes sense to you? Absolutely not. Absolutely. Um, but was this the guy that was dropped? This the cornerback, right? Yes, cornerback. Oh yeah. So, um, 
I mean, uh, it's mixed emotions about this because whenever you win with a certain player, you you ultimately think that this is a player that should stay. You know, that's that's always the going theme of a championship team. You want to keep as many pl- pieces together that won a championship and not change that chemistry. So when they do something like this, it se- it sends a signal that there's a lot of crazy things or something we don't know just of yet that's happening in the locker room or happening towards the team because I don't see anybody winning a championship and getting rid of the um the players that helped them win. But when you look at the game, they they weren't the strongest part of the team. So I do understand that. And they may be looking to improve, looking to go in a different direction and get some young, hungry players that want to play in the backfield. What do you think, Killer? I ain't do no research on this shit. I ain't give a fuck. <laughs> you don't care about Title Town, Killer? I didn't give a fuck. It's a fucking March, bro. I, I, I seen this shit. I said, Mace can handle this. Stack can handle this. I don't give a fuck. I'm not studying <laughs> this shit. Fuck, I give a fuck about the cornerback in March for the Kansas City Chiefs. They'll figure it out with Tom September. I don't know this nigga. <laughs> nigga ain't Revis Allen. <laughs> he ain't one of them niggas. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He ain't put on Revis Allen or one of them niggas who be who elite, who be like, yo, don't throw it that way. Stop a nigga from the Jets, Larry, that cornerback. The Revis, what's the cornerback? Now, he ain't Deion Sanders, nigga. Yeah, you know, what's the top cornerbacks in the world? Of the, the, you don't got an Allen yet, Yeah, you ain't got an Allen. Fuck, I'm the, yeah, yeah. Nigga yeah, said, you ain't got no Allen yet. Why are we Revis. talking about you? Yeah, um, Deion Sanders. Yeah, well, yeah well, he ain't I, got I, no I, resort, I said, nigga. I said, I wish I would. We won't see you for, it ain't like if you there, we I won't said, see a nigga for yeah, two days. I said, I wish I would do some due diligence on this. I said, <laughs> Mason Stack out. The fuck I give about the Kansas City Chief <laughs> cornerback in March. <laughs> Andy Reid and his staff is really good. If they let him go, I think they will figure it out by time September came. I didn't even know this nigga was lit. <laughs> you know, when you when you think about it, this is what I think about when the Kansas City Chiefs, and I know it's a 53-man roster and everybody plays their part, but let's, you know, and when it's when it's football season, I dive into it, you know, I got to stay on point for Mace, that, and OJ, and, and Maurice, so when football season is close, I make sure I'm on point. But, Nah, Andy Reid, every enemy when he was there, Kelsey, Pacheco, uh, Patrick Mahomey, and Taylor Swift. That's what comes to mind when I think about the Chiefs. Yeah, so listen, so listen, man, it's the other nigga that was nice too that um he just left the Rams and went to Miami. That nigga was good too. More of the story is I don't know. I don't, I mean, Stat, you might know better than me, and Mace, you might know. I don't know, Lejarius. I, I'm not even mad at that answer because of, I'm sure a lot of people feel the same way. Um, I'm just going to add, um, he, they shedded his franchise tag because he had $19.8 million guaranteed for the 2024 season. So that lets the Chiefs have more cap space to be able to try to get more oh, players. Oh yeah, we definitely need so, that cap yeah, space. It makes the Chiefs Bye-bye, fall. Bye-bye, Sneed. <laughs> we need the cap space. It was yeah. just, man, I don't know why they're letting him go if you have a championship a business, team. And man. now it's like, all right, we need the money. Yeah, it we do sense. need the money. I, I didn't know he was getting paid that much. I'm not hating on his salary, but get it somewhere else. Yeah, it brings him up to $27.4 million. So now the Chiefs are in the top 10 of salary cap space, which is obviously great for you guys since you guys already have the tools needed so more money for more players thank you for saying you guys you know no championship team is the same basketball football nobody comes back with the same team every year even like if it's Golden State when they're on their run the next year it's not the same team no team has the same team right every year so but I really appreciate you for acknowledging you guys thank you because I know Cam feels a way about that, but I don't, don't want to get into it. I, you know? I, I don't feel a way. People, you, I know you can <laughs> yeah. be seen, bro. I, the, the one thing that you are 100% correct on that I was 100% wrong on is Isaiah Thomas. Outside outside that, I, you can say that you want the people to see what's going on with you, murder. <laughs> they already know. <laughs> Cam, they already let's know. start off a week on the same team. Well, who? Let's start off the week on the same team. I don't have time for this today. What does that have to do with anything? What does that have to do with anything? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. To be honest, I, I, 
why are we giving a fuck about the Kansas City Chief cornerback? And at the end of the day, you curved them. Then you went back when they started winning and looking good. The fans know I don't got to speak for it no more. I don't. I don't. Okay. It's on you, murder. I don't got no problem. All right. Yeah. To, I'm let anything happen related to North Carolina, the Giants, or anything you'll say, I got blue on today for that. That's what I, if something goes on, you have Duke <laughs> blue on, North Carolina blue. <laughs> you'll you'll make it work. Wild, wild. <laughs> you'll, make, you'll make it work for you some type of way. It doesn't matter. Some type of way you'll make it happen so that you look right. But I, I already learned that. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, now let's discuss the Lakers. Anthony Davis shared his mentality of the games for the Lakers. He said, so it's that time of the year, especially for us, where every game is a playoff game. So the time of the year, extensively lock in and get the job done. Basically saying that they're playing every game like it's a playoff game. What do you guys think about his viewpoint? And then based off of what he said, do you feel like they're playing their games like it's a playoff game? Who's Anthony Davis said this? The leader. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> go with this. This is his team. He's, he's, he's <laughs> part of the Lakers. <laughs> nah, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm glad Stan knows it. Man. This is the Ohio issue. This yeah. is <laughs> Niggas might slip right in Mesa Rufi early this morning. <laughs> they might have drugged my nigga on the way here this morning. Look, look I mean, it's not fucking rocket science. I don't even got to look it up. Matter of fact, let me look real quick. But before I go to that, Y'all niggas is in ninth or tenth place, and that's the player. Okay, cool. Look, the, the Lakers are in ninth place. They're they're only Houston been balling their ass off now. Before before we get to the Anthony Davis say whatever. Mm -hmm. Since that shit came out with about Dre, that nigga fucking Jalen Green been busting ass, man. Yeah, he been busting ass, b. That nigga look like all this, like that kid gonna be solidified for the next check. He only 22. <laughs> so he gonna probably get two or three max contracts before his career over. That kid is solidified. Also, I heard he had another baby might be coming. And just, I heard he gonna have three babies in 12 months. Whatever pussy he fucking, keep fucking it, boys, because you've been busting ass ever since these uh, you've been getting 40 yeah, yeah he's been killing can I read his stats real quick just so yeah, people know ahead, yeah, yeah so since announcing he was expecting a child he's been averaging 27.8 points per game 6.8 rebounds 3.7 assists and 44.2% from the three so yeah, and he dunking all crazy yeah. man. that pussy got him jumping out the building bro this is what you was trying to tell Pat Beth. Yeah, you yeah. told Pat Bev, if, if you playing like, like this, this yeah, then you go, need to go, do it before yeah, the game. Yeah, you could go get some pussy, man. You know, <laughs> no, so some of that shit is re probably rejuvenating. He's a young nigga. Look, I don't know about the other kids he having. I don't know if it's allegations or whatever it is. Whatever it is, since the Dre and shit came out, he been jumping out the building, and that's what happens when you got a cougar in your corner and she tells you the truth, like what <laughs> needs to be done. <laughs> nigga, this is what we need, nigga. Cause you see what they talking about. You get that right cougar, they gonna put that battery in your back <laughs> and make you do what you're supposed to do. I ain't mad at Andrea <laughs> and Jalen Green. She but, gonna tell them what they need to hear. Yeah, you see what they doing. You see what they you saying. You see what they saying. But the reason I'm bringing up Houston and Jalen, Jalen Green rather, and Houston is because, look, Houston is balling and they're only actually a game out of 10th place from Golden State and three games out of ninth place from the Lakers. So Anthony Davis is 100% right. Every game from here on out is a playoff game. You have 12 games left in the season. So if y'all slip in and lose four games, you could potentially be out the play-in. So, duh, it ain't nothing but simple math. This ain't even algebra. This, this is... This is second grade math right here. You win the rest of these games, you stay in the playoffs. You lose, you could potentially be out the playoffs. And when I say the playoffs, not the actual playoffs. This is the play in. You're in ninth place. Golden State is in 10th place. Houston is in 11th place with a game out of 10th place, three games out of ninth place. Yes, every game for the Lakers from here mm -hmm. on out is a playoff game to stay in the play in. Duh, nigga. Yeah, but why do they have so much talent and they're playing to play in? This is crazy. This is this is a poor use of talent, for real. 
especially. I, I see what's going on with Golden State because they got Anthony Wiggins. He's not even, is he even back yet? Andrew. I mean, Andrew Wiggins. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's taking off each time he feels like it. So I understand that debacle. But when it comes to L.A., they got too much talent on that team to be on a playing team. And I think this is what LeBron is happy that he's now speaking. But we got to get we got to get him to a place where he takes over the team and make sure they make the playoffs. That's what I'm looking for. OK, so do you have a message to Anthony Davis that you would like to say? Anthony Davis, the talk is good. You know, let, the the talk is perfectly good, but we're, we're still waiting on you to take over the team and to make sure that the team make it to the playoffs. That's what all big dogs, paws, and alphas do. No diddy, you know? <laughs> I don't know, Brad. <laughs> 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 Why does this sound extra funny? But I don't know who it is. <laughs> it definitely does. I don't, it does, right? I, yeah. It just got a different um something to it. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Yeah. Um. <laughs> man, look, man. <laughs> Outside of that, I think that we've been waiting for Anthony Davis to take the team over for I don't know how long. It hasn't happened. And yeah, LeBron, look, man, LeBron takes the team over when he has to. But realistically, this man played more minutes than anybody in the NBA ever. He's 39 years old. And I mean, you got to do what you got to do. He's quote unquote the king of the league, self proclaimed king as. as as, you know, King James, everything else on his Twitter, IG handle, and so on and so forth. But it's very unfair. It's very unfair to me as far as having another supposed to be superstar yeah. and all-star on the team. Like, bro, you don't, do you even care what this man <laughs> has been doing before you got to the Lakers? Wanted you on the Lakers so you could be the one and it's been four or five years and you still haven't been the number one on the Lakers? I have a problem with that. Yeah. When he when he first came to the Lakers, he was he was believe I think a top ten, top five talent yes. in the league. Yeah, it was a time when it's considered yeah. top five talent. Yeah, this is this was supposed to be guaranteed. When we get Anthony Davis, pause. We're we're gonna get a few championships. That was the mindset. So they finagled him out of um, New Orleans to come to the Lakers. So that's what I'm expecting. I'm expecting not one, not two. Remember that that kind of talk? Mm -hmm. I'm expecting that from Anthony Davis. Tom probably ran out on that shit. Yeah. That's a dub, especially the way Devers playing. Look, we're talking about Lakers making a play, and that, that ship does sail. We need to put LeBron. Um, I know he has an opt-out option, and I don't think he'll leave L.A., but that ship sailed between uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron James dominating the West and those championships coming because you're absolutely right. I thought that was going to be the scenario also, and it just hasn't panned out, and other, other teams has grown since then. Okay, so now a new kickoff resembling the kickoff rules of the XFL used during his 2020 and 23 seasons and a prevention of the hip drop tackle, which could result in a 15-yard penalty an automatic first down are among 10 rules being looked at for changes within the league. What do you guys think about all the new proposals proposals that they're trying to make? And is there any rule that you think should be prioritized in football? Cam, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. This is too much football for March, <laughs> for real. I don't, I don't know how to really pay attention to it. What's a hip drop tackle? You know? I just started with football. You know? Yeah, so it's when they grab the runner with both hands and then like they tackle them down. Like, All it's, right. It's supposed to like, but they're trying to prevent players from getting concussions and getting hurt. So now they'll have a 15-yard penalty and automatic it's, first down. It sounds like to me that they, they're trying to make sure there's more returns, not even just people getting hurt. They want more returns. They want the game to be more active, faster, just like the NBA put rules in place to make sure the scores start getting higher. 
This sounds like one of those rules to make sure most people don't take a knee when they catch the ball and they try to take off and run, you know. And, and the more people who run, the better the game is going to be. But whenever somebody's catching the ball, you know they're just going to take a knee. That's, that's not the football I like. I like when people caught the ball and try to get go to the house. Yeah. Look, Oh fuck! I mean, I I remember the horse collar rule. That was yeah. fucking niggas up. Yeah, the horse like the collar horse, and the face grab. Yeah. yeah, the horse, the shit. Now when they <laughs> grab you by the shoulder when you running, and niggas was fucking up they uh their their legs or breaking leg. I remember that that rule I was for this hip check rule. It sounds like year after year they find reasons to act like niggas is getting hurt. When you, the, the football business is the hurt business. Pause. Yeah. Like, yo, you're in there to get hurt. Poor. Play not basketball saying, then, nigga. Yeah, I don't like I don't I don't get it. And I'm not sitting there saying I wish injury upon anybody, but it's part of the business. It's like a boxer. You're gonna get punched in your face. That's what's gonna yeah, happen as a point. boxer. At, at some, some point, point, you're gonna get punched in your face. It's just the way it goes. You know, I, my uncle's a boxing trainer. I used to go box from the time I was probably four years old or seven years old before I played basketball. And I had to make a conscious decision at seven years old that I don't want to get punched in my face for a living. Like, I don't want to do that. If you want to play these sports, this that comes with it. As far as the hip check, swivel, whatever rule that is, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I ain't been seeing niggas get hurt off the swivel. So, pause. I, I, I don't know about this rule. I, mean, I got to do some homework on it. Like Mace just said, I didn't know we was going to be in March talking about this much football, so I would have done the due diligence on it. And I'm looking at it now, and it says basically anytime a defender grabs the tackle. Yeah, anytime a defender grabs the runner with both hands or wraps the runner with both arms and then swivels or drops his hips or lower body landing on, or on top of trapping the runner, yeah, it like, sounds too freaky for me. Crazy, yo. You sure your father ain't Hip sending these? And this all might all sound that. like Pittsburgh Steel affairs no. rules. Yo. I'm a, I hope Papa Stan ain't sending these joints in, man. Because <laughs> what is what are we talking about? Yo, my nigga. If I had to change a rule, if you asking me what rule I had to change, the one rule that I would change so far, just off the top of my head, is putting the ball back on the maybe 15 or 20 yard line when they kick it off to the next team. Because Maybe a few years ago, I don't know how many years ago, they put it to the 25-yard line. And what you was alluding to, Mason, Larry um, named a couple people who ran it back. Hester Deion Sanders, also uh, Sean uh, Jackson, great great uh, people who run the ball back. If you look at the game, half the games I watch, you don't get a chance to run it back anymore because they kick it in the end zone. So you just start at the 25-yard line. And it's like, yo, bro. They moved it up to the 25, so every kicker is kicking it in the end zone. If they if you get a touchdown on the field goal and you're kicking the next team, I think you should move it back to the 15 or at least the 20 so you give an opportunity for the team to run it back. You barely see teams run the ball back anymore because the kicker is told to kick it in the end zone. If you got a good kicker and you want to kick it in the end zone, kick it from the 15-yard line to the end zone. That's the only rule I could think off the top of my head that I would probably change. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, on that note, first of all, Papa said did not give me that question. That's been a big debate that people have been yeah, discussing. Was, so I just want to know your thoughts. That's you with right now. Yeah, that was not no setup. I, I think they should bring back it. celebrating. That's what I, I miss the football. Yeah. Stop telling niggas they can't celebrate after they do something they worked hard to do. They brought it back a little bit, but then... So your point is like, it's a limit on the celebration. Like yeah. you can celebrate and do certain shit and then certain shit, they penalize you. Like I remember, uh, so they brought celebrations back. They had all type of shit. I remember OBJ uh, scored a touchdown probably three years ago and he got on his knees and lifted leg up and peed like a dog. And they said, <laughs> they said you're going too far. See, those are the, those are the celebrations <laughs> yeah. I miss. He said, I'm just saying there's a dog out here in this field. I like that. No diddy. <laughs> yeah, you want to stop it. Yeah. Stop me from scoring. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So. Okay, we're going to go to break. And when we return, we will discuss Chris Paul. Don't go anywhere. What Chris Paul do now? Yeah. 
She called this thing about us toxic Four years and counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about she it She wanna be free Why am I here? This one she wanna way. be free Hell, I don't wanna see her walk away I, I wish somebody told me the rules Disagreements let her win And it's cool Even when I'm right to say Welcome back. Now let's get into our Underdog Fantasy picks of the day. Tonight, the Celtics will play Atlanta. Underdog Fantasy has Jason Tatum at 26 and a half points. Do you have him higher or lower? Mace? Higher. It's, it's, it's Atlanta. He should have higher than 26. Hey, Cam? I'm going to go higher too. It looks like the Celtics don't care who they playing. There's, yeah. no, there's no breaks, no days off for the Celtics. They full gas right now. Right. Jalen Brown is at six rebounds. Do you have him higher or lower? Cam? Lower. Yeah, lower. Okay, and DeJounte Murray is at 39 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? 31. 39 and a half. It's lower, lower. Where's Ice Trey the gang at? He had his finger, something was like hurt. He had to get surgery. Oh, shout out to Ice Trey the gang, man. What you think? Lower, lower. Yeah. Lower. Okay. Download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks too. So Chris Paul got ejected for arguing with the ref Tony Brothers. He called him a TikToker and said that he had too much power, which resulted in two technical fouls in the final 30 seconds of the game. Thoughts on Chris Paul and the ref's interaction. And him getting ejected. 30 seconds. I'm, I'm happy for Chris Paul. I'm happy for Chris Paul doing this. Um, it's reminding me that Chris Paul is still a, in the NBA. I'm this is reminding me that Chris is still here. Um, I'm I'm really I'm really taken aback by by um this being the way we remember Chris. Though I think um, something got to happen in that Golden State uniform that that sends a different message because if if he ends his career just getting texts, that's not going to be good. I was I definitely want to see something better happen for Chris Paul. A guy that's been storied so well as a point guard, and and I think it it, it was boiled boiling down to something he said about he called him a brother. All right, no brother should have this kind of power. That's the part you're leaving out. What do you, what do you mean by that, Chris? No no black man should have this kind of power, like the Kanye song. I don't know, Killer. What do you think? <laughs> Chris Paul is averaging Patrick Beverly numbers right now. Seven points, four rebounds, six assists. Six assists a game for Chris Paul is ridiculous. Yeah. Six assists a game. Seven, six, and four. Yep. Seven, four, six. And when he's on the floor, Golden State is a minus five. So that means anytime, for people who don't know what that means, that means anytime Chris Paul's been on the, uh, for average on the floor this season, Golden State is at a negative five points whenever he's on the floor. So they lose when he's on the floor. Exactly. Um, I didn't think this was a good idea for Chris Paul to go there from the jump. I know a lot of people like Cam, you don't understand it, you don't see it, he'll be able to get back up, yada, yada, yada. Chris Paul, and a lot of point guards, not just Chris Paul. Uh, yeah, you can't back up a nigga who, who played the whole game, though. Chris Paul... Uh, his whole career has been a starting point guard and a lot of point guards. I talked to Magic Johnson one time and we was talking that point guards have a control issue to where they like to control things. Not <laughs> Magic Johnson said, not even in the game, off the court. <laughs> point guards in life have a control <laughs> issue. They want to control everything. And, and Magic Johnson's a point guard because he was talking to me, he said, you know us point guards, we want to control everything off the court, on the court. We have control issues. And I think that Chris Paul is in a situation where he can't control anything. Nobody's listening. <laughs> Nobody wants the advice. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear what he has to say. And not saying they're not sitting there saying taking little things, little things here, but at the end of the day, like they can literally sit there and tell Chris Paul murder. 
you don't know what it takes to be a champion. So please yeah. uh, miss me with that. But as far as uh, this referee situation, uh, I agree with what May said a little earlier. It's kind of sad that it's winding down uh, his career like this. I hope that he gets somewhere before his career is over to have a chance to possibly win a championship. I know we used to give him a hard time up here, but he's a legendary point guard, uh, fantastic leader. This is just not the right place with people you've battled over years and years and years and they actually won championships and you have control issues and you like to tell people what to do, but you can't tell these people what to do yeah. because they beat you over the years to get their championship. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, as far as the referee and his text, it seems like a grumpy old man to me. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. I, I hate one of them niggas who just mad at everything. So I hope he gets somewhere better, but I don't want to see Chris Paul go out like the grumpy old man because that's what it's seeming like to me. Yeah, he should have went to like Utah, somewhere where he would have played and still been able to be productive. Or even he would have been a better fit, pause for Memphis. You know, when it, when Ja comes back and they want to put Ja off guard, let Ja go crazy, it was, and they probably could swap Paul's Chris Paul for um, Smart or one of them. Yeah, Not right. Derrick Rose, though. Yeah, I mean, for championship contention, that isn't a bad place to go. But for a productive, it's like if you want to win a championship or if you want to still be Chris Paul and say, uh, I'm a leader, I can help a team be productive, I could teach younger players and they and trust me especially being in the west coast it's not going to help as far as winning the championship but he would probably be a hundred times more productive on San Antonio he could help win be out he could do pick and rolls he could tell mm -hmm. him where to be out on the floor he could teach him what being a professional NBA player is about and still be the Chris Paul that we remember because the Chris Paul that's playing on Golden State is not the Chris Paul we're accustomed to seeing over the years Okay, so the Knicks beat the Nets 105-93 to the other day. And when speaking on Michael Bridges over at the Nets, Josh Hart said, it's like that SpongeBob meme when Squidward is looking out the window and he sees SpongeBob and Patrick having fun. He is Squidward. So thoughts on his remarks about his former Villanova teammate. This is a weird day all together. I've never watched my Bob. What? Either. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> what? happened. I'm looking at Cam and so saying, I, explain I it was SpongeBob. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I don't know what the fuck Squidward is. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, it sounds so freaky. Like, yeah, it sounds crazy. It sounds wild to me. I'm not going to lie, Murd. I, I was thinking the same shit Squidward and, and what he was doing. Yo, I watched the Smurfs and Tom and Jerry and He-Man. <laughs> oh my god yeah. the snorkels the snorks what was the snorks fraggle rock yeah G.I. <laughs> Joe and stuff yeah, like that yeah I'm trying to remember Tom and Jerry I missed that era uh, yeah. yeah I don't know Squiddy and them niggas man. Yeah. I don't know so this you know when a nigga <laughs> using this scenario I would have to I don't know what the fuck, Doris? Oh, that could you translate this for yeah, us exactly? This is, yeah. First of all, this is just so funny because y'all both like to get on me about stuff, but it just yeah. yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so it's revenge. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's not revenge. I just believe it's Y'all niggas don't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's a good one. Okay, okay, that's cool. This is expecting. revenge. I see what's but going on. Squidward is like the bah humbug. So like he's always mad about everything because like he's not in the fun. While SpongeBob and Patrick have their day, like they be lit, and Squidward be over there at the rock depressed. So, so who's, who's having fun? The niggas at the Knicks? The and, Knicks. And they the niggas. SpongeBob and Patrick at the Krusty Krab. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Michael Bridges <laughs> over there at the, at the Rock. Matt. And they all went to Villanova. Uh, yeah. So he's basically saying my Villanova niggas is over there having mad fun and I'm over here. Well, no, see, that's the thing. Josh Hart. Josh Hart's lit. He's at the Krusty Krab. He called... Mike Helbridge is out being at the Rock by saying like, yeah, he over there with the Nets because we, we having a grand time over here. Because Michael Bridges was at the Krusty Krab, <laughs> and then he got kicked out. Not kicked out, but you know what I mean. So yeah, Josh Hart called him out. I basically look, Michael Bridges ain't there by choice. Got traded for KD. Yeah. When, when niggas want y'all to go for KD. 
That's just that. I don't think Mikel Bridges wants to be at the Krusty Krab or whatever the and fuck he's is not going. always mad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> yeah. I don't fucking know. It wasn't his choice to go to the Krusty Krab and be <laughs> squid or whoever. Nigga, look, that's how the NBA go. If you don't get these no-trade clause contracts, then you're subject to be wherever they want to ship you yeah, to. Yeah, you could wake up in Minnesota. Go. Yeah, that's not a bad place to wake up right now. But you can wake up in Portland. <laughs> so... um, at the end of the day, I can understand the scenario now. It, it kind of feels bad to see your brother over there not doing well, but that's part of growing up playing basketball. Look, we won't, we had great time in college. We're professionals now, and we moved on to the same to the next thing. Look, they all live in New York. Yeah. They can all hang out. <laughs> they can all rekindle their villain over days if you're looking for a silver lining at the end of this, but it isn't really Mikel Bridges' fault. They wanted KD, Phoenix, and you had to go to Brooklyn. But I think Mikel Bridges, and I don't know off the top of my head, because when I seen the SpongeBob shit, I was like, I'm just going to let them explain it to me because I don't, I never watched SpongeBob. But I don't think Mikel Bridges would stay there when his contract is up. He's a great player, a sensational player. When he was in Phoenix, uh, he was really, really good. So um, good luck to you. And look, the Knicks, you got to give the Knicks their credit, man. They're balling out. They're looking good this year. And... It isn't like the Knicks had the success, so um, Josh Hart, you better chill because you don't know this jinx that's on you, nigga. <laughs> you don't know the black cloud that, run, that goes over the garden. Yeah. It seems all fun and fun now. Hopefully, we'll see what the truck... y'all lose. Yeah. Then, then they'll be at the crush crowd. talking about sending you to the crush. <laughs> you will be the crowd. <laughs> they they got to go the, for my cow. Yeah, yeah. The chum bucket. Yeah, so... And that's exactly what happened with Kuzma talking about the Pistons and then they ended up in the right same situation. So, all right. Okay. Paul Pierce says the Clippers have no leadership with Westbrook out. What do you guys think about Westbrook's absence? And then do you agree with Paul Pierce? Man, man, that's interesting because I thought um, James Harden is at the point. Is that correct? So he's saying though he's a good player, he has no leadership. He's saying that just the Clippers have no leadership with Westbrook out. He said, people don't understand how big Westbrook is for that team. Like, who's the voice? You got leadership on the sideline, but you know you got to have leadership in that locker room, in the game, on the bench, right there. And that make that to a degree, that does make sense because now that I think about it, because when you think of this whole, this whole successful run started with Westbrook being the person to say, I'm going to step back. I'm going to come off the bench. And and allow this what could really happen as a possibility happen. And that that does say a lot about the leadership and that unselfishness is what it takes to win on a big, big level. But when you don't have that, you definitely are going to see the difference um, because other people are not willing to make that that um, sacrifice that Russell Westbrook has made. But um, I think that's interesting for him to say that because he knows all of them so very well. What do you think about that, Killer? Who said this exactly? Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce. They're all L.A. kids, so he he knows them better than anybody else. Could be hating. Paul Pierce up there with Skip. He's going to say whatever he want to say, you know. <laughs> you don't know Paul drinking in the morning. I don't know if Paul drunk or not. <laughs> you know, Paul, Paul, Paul say what do you want to say? That's one thing I fuck with Paul Pierce. That nigga, if that if he say it, he think that. Yeah. He thinks that, you know. Um, so question is, was he drinking before he said it? Maybe drinking six in the morning. That's does, the question. Does that make it a lie? Just a little the Clippers inebriated. Are, the, look, man, the Clippers are in in fourth place, they're a game out of fifth place. Two and a half games out of sixth place. It looks like they're going to be in the playoffs. Yeah. Um, as far as leadership is concerned, I don't know. I would, uh, you know, that's to be determined in the locker room. And Paul Pierce has a bunch of experience. I would never doubt his experience. His, his eye tests on what he sees on the floor as opposed to somebody like us who's never been in an 82-game season, body language, coaching staff, et cetera. So, you know, I fuck with Paul about the drinking, but not really. But at the same time, he has experience that knows, and maybe he sees something that the average eye doesn't. 
It's an 82 game season. People are going to be hurt. People are going to come in. People are not going to be there. But um, I don't know. I think if Westbrook comes, I think what I will say about this leadership or no leadership, I definitely think they need him for the playoffs. I don't know the timetable on him coming back and not coming back, but Westbrook will definitely be needed for the playoffs because to have a Russell Westbrook, a guy who averaged a triple double for more than one season, coming off the bench, that's important. Yeah, that's, that's a important. luxury. Yeah, exactly. That's a great word. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, when when there's there's two there's two moments I'm looking forward to. It's is is the Clippers in the playoffs to see who they become in the playoffs because I'm still not sold on James Harden and for some reason. I, I'm 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 rooting for the GOAT, you know, and the Clippers, but I'm not I'm still not sold on James Harden. I think he's a phenomenal player. I think he's a a first ballot Hall of Famer. But when it comes, something just happens in the playoffs that I'm still awaiting to see. So until that is proven, James, you still you still on the um the lookout right now. This is a must see moment, and as well as I want to see the Bucks versus Boston. I'm not sold out on Boston until I see what they do with the Bucks. Those are two must see moments for me. Well, I'm really interested. I'm excited for the playoffs more in the West and the East because um, <clears throat> if you if it, if it goes as standing now, I'm just saying, and right now, if the playoffs start today, the Lakers or Golden State are in it at all. Right now, the seventh and eighth seed is the Dallas Mavericks and the Sacramento Kings, so we wouldn't even have a LeBron James or Steph Curry playoff, let alone play in. So I'm excited to see, me personally, my my dream for the playoffs in the Western Conference right now. And damn, Denver's back in first. You know, I was hoping, not saying, see, I'm not caring who <laughs> wins. I was really hoping that Oklahoma City, and it's not too late, Oklahoma City and Minnesota get the one and two seeds. And, so they could play and Golden the, State and the Lakers. That's my wish. Yeah, Rose, that's really, really my dream. That's not the scenario right now, and it's not too late for that scenario to happen. But that's my wish for the first round of the Western Conference. I would love to see Oklahoma, Minnesota against Golden State Lakers, some type of way. This will see if niggas is ready to pass the torch, or if niggas is ready to take the torch, or if niggas is ready to say sit your young ass down. That's what I would really like to see. It's not too late, but we'll see what happens. And then the last question before we wrap, Bull Bull called out the refs and said, y'all dick riding, bro. I get it. After an alleged <laughs> foul on Wemby. Do you guys think certain players get major favoritism over others? And then what did you guys think about what Bull Bull had to say? Bo, I get it. <laughs> That's going to be my new one for us when I run around. Yo, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly how you feel when you're playing good defense. You know, ain't nobody even touched this this nigga. They just trying to make him a star. That wasn't league. no foul. Talking yeah. about, I don't mean to cut you off, but that definitely wasn't no foul. <laughs> yeah, it's like we trying to make this nigga a superstar. I get it. <laughs> Yeah, and Bo Ball, I man, Bo Ball might as well play with San Antonio. Pause, because I it, it just seemed like Phoenix is not giving him a good shake, you know. Even even when he's saying I get it, what I really look at is that also this thing with what's his name, um, Isaiah Thomas. Y'all are bugging out, and I get that as well. So we're gonna use I get it. I'm gonna use my I get it. For Isaiah Thomas, come on, KD, come on, Bradley Bill, Devin Booker, come on, put in the word for the for the OG man. Don't put that man on a ten day contract and don't let him play two games. Come on, man, I get it. Why don't you explain what you're talking about so people know what you're talking about? All right. Well, Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas was put on a ten day contract from the G League. First game in the G League, he has thirty two. He goes to Phoenix. Phoenix doesn't play him for at least two games. He's only there for 10 days. I'm saying KD, Bradley, Bill, Booker, all of the guys that got say-so in that organization, 
Y'all need to work this out and make sure this guy stick around because he's going to be the piece that y'all need. He's definitely going to be the piece that y'all need is when when this when the schemes break down, you're going to need a point guard, a real point guard that can get the ball up the floor and can um, create his own shot and not be a liability on the offensive side. Which that's a great that's a great breakdown. Let me ask you this: Do you think it's a by him not getting in the game uh, hurts him or helps him moving forward with his basketball career? Because if it, first of all it's the playoffs, and then maybe another team may want to pick him up next year. By him not getting in, and he may potentially get cut. How do you feel his career should go after this? Um. It's it's hard to succeed after being cut without productivity. So that's the part that that I'm really focusing on. If you put him in the game, let's say he only plays six minutes. Let's say he had eight points in six minutes. The next team that looks knows we could use that eight points coming off the bench in a playoff series when the when the roster, like you said, Killer, is shrunk so much from from ten players. To now just six players or seven players, the people you put in got to be game changers. And especially in a series, you only need a guy like Isaiah Thomas to win one game in the series. Like like the, the Miami Heat is key for that. They always have one player that wins a game. Like So you'll have um, Bam win a game. Then it'll be the... Um, the white boy that was shooting, not just um, what's your team? Hero, not a hero. The other one, Duncan Robinson. Duncan, yeah, Duncan will win a game. Then hero win a game. That's how you win series. And Isaiah Thomas is one of those guys who had that type of chip on his shoulder. He could win a game. Yeah, I I totally agree. Um, I think he he and he has playoff experience yeah. as well. Yeah, I, I think it's fucked up. It's fucked up. But it's kind of what, what I said. He might as well not even been playing. Yeah. I told niggas. <laughs> you did he, say that. No, but you're right. He did get picked up. But if you're not playing, it's fucked up. I think when he came into that G League and scored 32, it was the right thing to pick him up. But give him an opportunity, especially when you're up 29 points. You know, um, yeah. what happened was, but Mason gave a break, great breakdown of it, and Larry uh, brought it up as well. The Phoenix Suns was up 29 points without however many minutes left, and <laughs> they did not put Isaiah Thomas in the game yeah. to the point to where the San Antonio players was like, yo, throw him in the game. And everybody played outside of Isaiah Thomas. And I'm not sure about this and that, but this may be like Frank Vogel. Like, I didn't ask for him. Yeah. The GM brought him here. I didn't ask for him. Yeah, that's a GM thing. So yeah, you're just gonna put this nigga on a team and then right. think I'm gonna follow what you're saying. It's still my team, right? I can see the coach doing that, right? So hopefully, before the ten days is up, Isaiah get another chance to uh, show some pro- productivity so he can stick around longer than the ten days. Back to Bowl Bowl when he was like, "Yeah, that shit was funny." I don't know if y'all seen the clip. You could probably Google this yeah. clip's hilarious. He did not <laughs> foul Wimbe, and he was like. Told the rush, yo, y'all sucking dick, bro. I get it. I get it. Basically <laughs> alluding to the fact that they're trying to make Wimbe the star of the NBA. So that's to to me, that's what made it funny. Yeah. And so you me, can't touch him at all. Right. And to me, uh, my personal opinion on that is the NBA makes stars. So when Zion comes into the league. He's supposed to be this star. Uh, when my uh, LeBron James comes into the league, he's supposed to be this star. Carmelo Anthony, he's supposed to be the star. Whoever these number one picks, Anthony Edwards, he's supposed to be the star. It's up to the player to live up to that reputation that yeah. they're giving you a platform to be a star. Now, if you don't live up to be the star, that's really on you. Uh, well, Wimby, his numbers say star written all over it as far as a rookie's concerned, but it doesn't wheel them the wins. Uh just with the, you know, back to the eye test again, or that fuck that we gonna win the night mentality. And I'm on Bo Bo's side about it. I'm I'm on his side. Yeah. I get it. Y'all suck I get it. dick, bro. But what I will say is this is that 
and I, and this is a topic maybe I'll say for Maurice when he comes, is about making stars and promoting players to be superstars. And what I think I see is, and this is kind of off topic, but on topic, is that's what's going on with the NCAA men and women right now. Being that these kids have figured out how to make NIL money and money on the side and the NCAA isn't getting any of it and they're not getting a, uh, four years for these people to stay, you don't see, and you know, because everybody like, oh, you care about the women. What about the men? Nobody knows his own men. And this is, you don't get a Fab Five. You don't get a UNLV running Rebels. You don't get a Chris Webber. You're not seeing a Carmelo Anthony. Yeah. You're not seeing all the stars from college that were made to be stars all these years because now they're getting money and the NCAA is not getting the money that they usually get from students or to capitalize off the students. And plus the students that are really good aren't playing. So what does it do? The momentum shifts to the women. So now the women are going to stay four years. You're going to put the celebrity on them. And not only that, not saying that they don't deserve it, but now they say, let's just be this where we can make the money because these niggas done figured it out. So now you know Caitlin Clark, you know Angel Reese, you know Juju Watkins. You know, I know 10 women basketball players in college as opposed to 10 NCAA men in college. Four years ago, you couldn't even use the March Madness brand on the NCAA women. They wasn't allowed to use March Madness. Now they're down with March Madness. Yeah. So that's another topic for another day, but I thought I'd bring that up being that we're talking about yeah. making celebrities. Yeah, that's that's really interesting because when you think of um Bo Ball, I would want to I would want to ask Bo Ball. Let us know what you meant more about you get it because who was he talking to? You think who was he talking? He was mic'd up, so he was talking to the referee about calling the foul and say I get it, but it was bigger than basically trying to say they told y'all. Let this nigga slide. <laughs> call the extra fouls. Basically, he's accusing the league's front office. Yeah, that's of what I'm getting at. So, is that at this point, does he think he's better than Wimbe, and they're just making Wimbe this? But I'm really that. Well, that's I how see, I took it as well. Before the season started, I you know, internet is undefeated, but I seen memes talking about Bo Bo had to walk so Wimbe could fly. Because they're both tall, they both could dribble, you both got handled, so to speak. It's that Wimbe has been given a team to say, go figure it out. Yeah. And Bo Bo has never been given a team to say, figure it out. I'm not saying he's going to be as good as Wimbe and could do what Wimbe do, but they're both tall, they're both unicorns, both outside the box. But me personally, if you give Bo Bo Portland, he's going to win nine games. Went to Spurs, is that 15 games? Yeah. So I would give him that. Okay. Well, today was a good learning day. We learned about the hip drop tackle, the chum bucket, and the crusty crab, and how Bull Bull really feels. But that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. And as always, it is what it is. Uh,